Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Force Will 101 with Matt, and today I have for you what I like to call Green Grim. Um, Green Grim is really just kind of a token name for any kind of control Grim deck. Um, so talking a little bit about Grim, even though he really needs no further introduction. Uh, just an amazing card. Uh, maybe one of the most important things that's kind of overlooked is the fact that he can you can pay any attribute if you're playing a Fairy Tale. So even if, let's say, your first your first turn you flip up a non-blue source, but hey, look, I have this Cheshire I want to play, and you get to play it for free. And then the other effect that is just really strong, uh, let's say you're going to the late, the late game and you draw a Gretel. If you have a mana open, you can discard it, search up any fairy tale in your deck, and play it that way. And it's just really a great way to make sure your draws are always live if you have that one extra um, mana up. So uh, going on a little bit about to the stones now, we have an Elmeris, uh, just a really great uh, true magic stone. Giving your Hamlin flying, giving any one of your relevant you know guys flying, just to make sure you can get in those uh, the damage consistently is just a great thing to do. Um, Feet Sting, really important to protect your Hamlins from a stoning to death, for example. So it's just another way to protect your you know otherwise limited creature base and making sure that the Hamlins really do stick around for their full value. Um, outside of that, we're just playing four uh, Magic Stones of Gusting Skies. Just a nice wind light source. Again, you really want to make sure that uh, you're able to turn on both Elmeris and Feet Sink. And also, the other reason why it's called Green Grim is because you're playing Gretel and you're playing all Green Stones. So then I have four Deep Woods as well. Um, green Grim can, you know, since there's no real condition on your fairy tales that they you, you know play them for free as much as you want um, you don't have to necessarily go into those specific colors as I'm going to show here with Cheshire you don't actually need blue to play four Cheshires um, and it's something that I you know when I'm going between decks I might forget every now and then but uh, you know you could have not a single blue blue stone in the deck and still be able to cast Cheshire which is something that's very very strong so for Cheshire, uh, not much needs to be said about this card in particular. Uh, very good draw effect. Uh, just a relevant blocker too. That uh, let's say they're swinging with something, you know, a, a, a Hamlet, for example. You can freely block with Cheshire uh, because it can't be targeted by the tap down ability, and it just shuffles back into your deck. So chances are you're just going to draw it again. Going on a little bit more about Fairy Tales, we have four Tinker Bells. Um, so with this card, anytime you're playing a fairy tale, it gets pumped by 200, 200, and it does count itself. So this is something where you're going in the late game, you're getting a little stalled out, that you're just accumulating a most all these fairy tales. Again, this is where you want Elmeris. Um, in most of my games, Tinkerbell is pretty common to be an 800 to 800 or a thousand power toughness creature. Um, so it's definitely another way that they might not see it coming. It's a one drop. It's good pretty much any time of the game. Um, and something that can really close out a game early, too, if it goes unchecked. Uh, going into more of our ramp package, we have four Elvish Priest. Um, and really what this allows you to do is do a turn two tell a fairy tale, which I'll get into a little bit more later. Um, but anytime you're using the ramp spells, it's just really great. It lets you get ahead. Um, it's another way to leave up Zeke's when your opponent might not be expecting it, or leave up mana for Thiefsing when they're not expecting it. Um, on top of that, we have four Gretels. Again, so when Gretel enters the battlefield, you or enter the field, I should say, you flip over the top card of your Magic Stone deck. If it's a Windstone, which you know all the entire deck minus two cards is, so 80% chance, um, you know, or 80% of it is Windstones, I should say. Very, very likely that Gretel is going to flip over a Windstone and then ramp you uh, a little bit further into it and really get you ahead of the game. Um, getting all those stones are very important and then the the way that we really can make use of these creatures uh, that might not be doing anything otherwise is playing three Rapunzel so what makes this card so good um, you know it doesn't it unfortunately doesn't recover during your recovery phase that's not that big of a deal because what you want to be doing with this is every time you tap the creature tap Rapunzel you can give a creature plus 200 plus 200 in flying and the way you untap her is by resting another creature Untapping her, tap to give a creature plus 200 in flying, rest another creature, untap her again, and then tap it to give another creature plus 200 plus 200 in flying. So you can very quickly realize that having 
access to Rapunzel in the deck as a way to turn your Gretels, turn your Elvish Priests, and turn your otherwise mostly irrelevant creatures into some decent sized bodies. So that's another way that, you know, if you want to just sacrifice a Gretel to say a, a J ruler, you have that option as well. Um, just kind of my fun one of, as Three Musketeers is very popular in my meta, Emperor's New Clothes. Uh, when he comes into play, he destroys all addition resonators and then your opponent uh, that your opponent controls, and then your opponent can no longer play addition, addition resonators while he's in the field. Great card against Three Musketeers, which is, again, one of the most popular uh, decks that, you know, if people are trying to get into the game, if it's very budget-friendly, it's very powerful for mono green, um, and it's something to consider. Um, it's also just really good against the Kaguya decks that have, sorry about that, that have the uh, longness. Yes, they can just bring it back, but it's at least a way that they have to then answer your Emperor's New Clothing as well. Uh, the common all-star of the deck, Hamlin's Pied Piper. So he costs five, but I'll just go ahead and talk about him in conjunction with this card, Tell a Fairy Tale. So four of these, pretty much, I always want to be running. Um, Hamlin, he's a 1,000-1,000 body. When he attacks, when he comes into play and attacks, pardon me, he can target a resonator, both recovered or rested, is an important thing to note, um, and it will not untap during its opponent's next turn. So what's so amazing about this is that if your opponent only has one creature, uh, they can attack with them, it's going to lock it down, you can swing in for that, that free 1,000 points of damage. Same thing with Elmeris, which is why I just absolutely love that true stone, um, is you can give them flying, tap something down if there's two creatures, you know, and really feel like you're getting ahead in that. And then tell a fairy tale. What this does is lets you search your deck for a fairy tale. And if your ruler is Grim, which we are definitely playing Grim, you can put it into play and it triggers its enter ability. So again, in the case of Hamlin, you know, one of the best things that you can be doing in this deck is to play Elvish Priest on turn one, turn two, jam, tell a fairy tale, and then likely you're going to have some kind of backup protection for Hamlin, which I'm going to get into now. So we're playing three Absolute Cake Zones, just a great way to counter um, a, no <clears throat> a normal spell. So, you know, stonings, anything of that nature, anything that's going to you know threaten your Hamlin, you can easily counter it. Another great thing is because we're playing for Gretel, the spell, the spell says if you control Hedel... Gretel or Hansel, you get to draw a card. So, you know, if you're playing a control deck, drawing cards is always a good thing. Um, I can't talk about this next card enough. Um, everyone that knows me on the Forceful US page just knows how much I rant about this card. Uh, Zeke's. Um, it's basically just a four of in every single deck I play that has green in it. You can counter a creature spell. You can give one of your creatures hexproof. You can pump all your creatures by plus 200, plus 200. Or let's say you're in the control mirror and it's very attrition-y, they don't have Necronomicon, and you're you know getting to the point where you might deck each other out, then you can just shuffle your graveyard back in, and because of Cheshire, because of Absolute Cake Zone, uh, you can draw those cards back out again. And it's just a great way to ensure you don't mill yourself out. Um, in a Kaguya deck, that's definitely relevant. I've have come very, very close to milling myself out as well. So Zeke's the Ancient Mage, love the card, should be a four of. It is incredibly, incredibly strong for a rare. Uh, a card that I pretty much always run two of as well, as long as I have a light source, is Dream of Juliet. Again, I can't talk about this card enough. You know, draw a card, blink a creature, or destroy an addition. So if they're playing Necronomicon, you want to make sure that you're turning off that engine very quickly, uh, or else they'll steal the game from you. So Dream of Juliet, always a two of if you have a light deck. Uh, it's just so versatile. And then lastly, um, and this last three cards are really, you know, flexible, but what I really like is having a one of Athos. Uh, so he's a fairy tale, which is also awesome. Um, if, so you can search for him when you really, really need him. Um, and <clears throat> an 8 body body's not too bad, but when he has an enter ability, that you get to search your uh, deck for an addition resonator and put it into your hand. Because we're not playing uh, Puss in Boots, we can't automatically equip it to him. So the two additions that I have in the deck, Crucifix, and Lugnus, the Holy Lance. So again, this is more or less just for the mirror. So you have Crucifix, which states that your card cannot be attacked, that it's equipped to, and can't be the target of spells or abilities. So really what you want to be doing with this is maybe saying equip it, equipping it to your Hamlin, and then you can just, in the mirror match, it's insane, because you can just freely attack, lock down your opponent's board, 
um, and just really, you know, make their other Hamlins very, very sad that they can't tap them down. And then Longness is just, you know, you only really need one Crucifix if you're going to be playing it. Longness is just a great way to give something pro, pro Darkness or Pro Black. They can't stoning to death it. Usually the 500 will put it out of double thunder range of whatever creature you're attaching it to, um, which is also very, very relevant. And it's just another way to get a 1300, uh, you know, 1300, 1300 body on the field. So often I'll have a combination where it's just these two creatures, and that's all I need to close out a game because they're very strong on themselves. So uh, this is definitely a deck I'd recommend if anyone likes a control deck that has the ability to tutor up several different uh, Fairy Tales, the deck has a lot of variability they can build it, since you, the, you know, the only real condition is that I strongly recommend playing Gretel, so you can always have that ramp, and then beyond that, you can play pretty much whatever you want. Hamlin's a Fairy Tale, you know, I would very strongly suggest Light, simply because of having Tell a Fairy Tale in the deck is very strong, and if you can cast it on turn two, even better. Um, and outside of that, I think it's just a, a great deck. I played it this week at our tournament, uh, went 3-0 with it. Uh, we had a very small turnout because there was Yu-Gi-Oh! Regionals going on, there was a Magic event going on as well. Uh, but I think in the very near future, after I build a couple more decks and do a couple more requests, um, it's something I would definitely recommend to people if you want a more controlling type deck that's not Abdul. So uh, I hope you guys like the deck tech. You know, Make sure to like, subscribe us on YouTube. You can always follow us on Twitch as well. And you can always catch me at in the Force Will US page. Uh, on top of that, if you ever want to send us a deck list to preview in one of our live testing videos or maybe of our lackey CCG videos, feel free to shoot uh, Chris and myself an email at ggforceofwill at gmail.com. Um, and we're going to be doing another community-based episode here in a couple weeks. So thank you guys for checking out the Deck Tech. I'm Matt Cosmo, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Force Will 101 with Matt, and today I have for you what I like to call Green Grim. Um, Green Grim is really just kind of a token name for any kind of control Grim deck. Um, so talking a little bit about Grim, even though he really needs no further introduction. Uh, just an amazing card. Uh, maybe one of the most important things that's kind of overlooked is the fact that he can you can pay any attribute if you're playing a Fairy Tale. So even if, let's say, your first your first turn you flip up a non-blue source, but hey, look, I have this Cheshire I want to play, and you get to play it for free. And then the other effect that is just really strong, uh, let's say you're going to the pump by 200-200, and it does count itself. So this is something where you're going in the late game, you're getting a little stalled out, that you're just accumulating a most all these fairy tales. Again, this is where you want Elmeris. Um, in most of my games, Tinkerbell is pretty common to be an 800, to 800 or 1,000 power toughness creature. Um, so it's definitely another way that they might not see it coming. It's a one drop. It's good pretty much any time of the game. Um, and it's something that can really close out a game early too if it goes unchecked. Uh, going into more of our ramp package, we have four Elvish Priest. Um, and really what this allows you to do is do a turn two Tell a Fairy Tale, which I'll get into a little bit more later. Um, but anytime you're using the ramp spells, it's just really great. It lets you the late, the late game and you draw Gretel. If you have a mana open, you can discard it, search up any fairy tale in your deck, and play it that way. And it's just really a great way to make sure your draws are always live if you have that one extra um, mana up. So, uh, going on a little bit about to the stones now, we have an Elmeris, uh, just a really great uh, true magic stone. Giving your Hamlin flying, giving any one of your relevant you know, guys flying, just to make sure you can get in those uh, the damage consistently is just a great thing to do. Um, Feed Sing, really important to protect your Hamlins from a stoning to death, for example. So it's just another way to protect your, you know, otherwise limited creature. Something that I, you know, when I'm going between decks, I might forget every now and then. But, uh, you know, you could have not a single blue, blue stone in the deck and still be able to cast Cheshire, which is something that's very, very strong. So for Cheshire, uh, not much needs to be said about this card in particular. Uh, very good draw effect. Uh, just a relevant blocker too. That uh, let's say they're swinging with something, you know, a, a, a Hamlin, for example. You can freely block with Cheshire uh, because it can't be targeted by the tap down ability, and it just shuffles back into your deck. So chances are you're just going to draw it again. 
going on a little bit more about fairy tales, we have four Tinkerbells. Um, so with this card, anytime you're playing a fairy tale, it gets your base and making sure that the Hamlins really do stick around for their full value. Um, outside of that, we're just playing four uh, Magic Stones of Gusting Skies. Just a nice wind light source. Again, you really want to make sure that uh, you're able to turn on both Elmeris and Feastsink. And also, the other reason why it's called Green Grim is because you're playing Gretel and you're playing all green stones. So then I have four deep woods as well. Um, green Grim can, you know, since there's no real condition on your fairy tales, that they you, you can play them for free as much as you want. Um, you don't have to necessarily go into those specific colors, as I'm going to show here with Cheshire. You don't actually need blue to play four Cheshires. Um, and it's